To someone that understands, no explanation is necessary. To someone that doesn't understand, no explanation will suffice. Every June for the last 25 years, Villanova women's basketball coach Harry Peretta has made the 150-mile pilgrimage to visit his former star and cherished friend, Shelly Pinnafather. Seeing her is like a spiritual energizing. Pinnafather's open. She has. There was nobody that she was going to run past, and there was nobody that she was going to jump over. But she was going to be the best player on the floor every time she stepped on the floor. She was a Larry Bird type of player. Pinnafather will shoot from the foul line. Her shot is good. She was essentially the highest paid women's basketball player in the world for four years. How do you get so good at something and then walk away from it? The amazing thing about her as a, as a high school player was she never lost a high school game. She was 96 and 0 in high school. A deeply religious and highly touted basketball player when she came out of high school in 1983. Pinnafather was considered one of the nation's top five recruits. All the top schools were looking for her, and there was a lot of competition. And then Harry shows up, and Harry was wearing the brown scapular. He was praying the rosary every day, very spiritual man. I went to Villanova, so I can I can promise you, like he says the rosary every day, goes to mass on Sundays. He is not a, not a fake Catholic. He's legit. Let's go. Make that make layup. In Villanova's Harry Peretta, Pinnafather ultimately found both a kindred spirit and a coach who would bring out her fullest potential. There you go. That's it. That's what we want. Hop in the backboard. She was actually a lazy basketball player when she first came here. Her father actually said to me, she's going to be tough to coach. She thought about transferring at one point because I was pushing her too hard. Harry was very, very hard on her. Somewhere in the middle of her sophomore year. How much more strength you get when you have your fingers Her work ethic firm. changed. Her commitment to being that best player she wanted to be came to light. The key, Pennafather bounce pass to Pasek, into Pennafather. Pennafather would become a three-time Big East Player of the Year and All-America. To this day, Shelly Pennafather remains Villanova's all-time leading scorer among both women and men. Tie back to Pennafather from the foul line. Shot is good. Following graduation in 1987, Shelly's journey led her to Japan. At the time, it was one of the few places where women could play professional basketball. Shelly was pretty isolated in this culture of solitude, living a pretty austere life. The team was doing awful. We were 0 and 5. So I made this deal with God. Shelly's deal was if she could pull her team out of last place and help it qualify for the playoffs, she would vow to donate her time and postseason bonus to Mother Teresa's convent in Norristown, Pennsylvania. It came down to the last game. If they win this game, she gets her bonus. If they lose, no bonus. She hits a shot at the buzzer to uh, win the game, and she gets her bonus. Four years later, in 1991, on the verge of earning a $200,000 annual salary, Shelly Pinnafather answered her calling renounced her worldly life for the austere existence of enclosure in the poor Claire's Monastery in Alexandria, Virginia. The commitment to adopt the life of a cloistered nun included the absence of physical contact with family or friends. It was a decision that stunned her loved ones. She came upstairs and, and jumped on my bed and said, well, I, I need to talk to you and then kind of explain the whole thing. And I remember I was, you know, just putting a good face on it. And then she left and I cried the whole night. It was just really hard. It, it was, a, honestly, for me, a struggle. Someone you're so close with, you know, it was a, a period of mourning, honestly, a grieving. In 1994, Shelly Pinnafather would give her family one last hug before becoming Sister Rosemarie of the Queen of Angels. When we drove Sister Rose to the convent, 
and we came home, Sister Rose had left a, a note for mom. And I just found mom, you know, sitting and crying. Mom, I think, was asked to make a much harder sacrifice. You know, she had to give up the right to, you know, be a daily presence in her daughter's life. Over these last 25 years from that very day when her daughter crossed the monastery threshold, Mary Jane Pennefather has kept a candle burning at home, praying for this day to finally arrive. For today, June 9, 2019, as on every 25th anniversary for Sister Rose, she is allowed a precious embrace with her loved ones. For many here, it will be their first with Sister Rose, and for some, likely, their last. As soon as her mother got up from her seat, tears started to stream down my face. If it's gonna be another 25 years, that's not gonna happen, probably. You know, they, that, that hug is not gonna happen again. It's hard to make sense of that. My body was literally shaking, and Shelly always being Shelly, worrying about the other person. She's like, are you okay? For me, it was just a chance to, like, just say I love you. I've been in the room with her for 25 years and not allowed to touch her. If I'm alive, I'll, I'll try to get there. You know, hopefully I'll be alive in 25 years.